Welcome to Beardy, Bruce Lee Central. Hey everybody, it's Beardy here. What's going on guys? Okay, so Danny Nisanto was an accomplished martial artist even before he met Bruce Lee. He was a Kempo Karate Grand Master under Ed Parker. So this guy was legit as they come. He was also an army veteran. He was in the Air Force for like six or seven years. So this was a really tough dude who knew his stuff. So Ed Parker introduced him to Bruce Lee. He said, I know this guy. He's called Bruce Lee. There's something special about him. He's got his own martial arts style called Jeet Kune Do. You should go and train under this guy. And that's exactly what Dan Inesanto did. He went to Bruce Lee. He asked him if he could be his student. And Bruce Lee made him instantly one of his top students. Like I said, this guy was legit. He knew Filipino martial arts. He was a Kempo Karate Grand Master. So he was a seasoned martial artist. That's why Bruce Lee made him one of his top students. And they sparred a lot together. And not only that, Bruce Lee learned a lot from Dan Inesanto, especially Filipino martial arts. So Bruce Lee didn't see him as just one student. This guy was a legit martial artist that could compete with the very best out there. So like everyone else, he wanted a piece of Bruce Lee. <laughs> this is always the same story over and over again. Everyone that gets to know Bruce Lee, they hear about these rumors, you know, that Bruce Lee did this, he did that, he's that fast, he's that strong, etc., etc. So it becomes like a myth, you know, and you want to you want to test that myth. And that's exactly what Danny Nesanto did. He said to Bruce Lee, I want to fight. I want to see how good you really are. And Bruce Lee initially declined Dan Inesanto. He said, no, I'm not interested in that. And we can just go, we can just go easy. You can do easy sparring to sessions together. And Dan Inesanto said, no, no, please. I want a legit fight. And eventually that's exactly what he got. And that's what you're seeing right here. So they set up a fight. And this was supposed to be a, an MMA fight. This was not a karate fight or a Jeet Kune Do fight. This was an all-out mixed martial arts fight. So everything goes. But the fight only lasted for like two seconds. And Dan Inesanta himself said in an interview, you can find that interview on YouTube, he said that he got shell-shocked by Bruce Lee's punch. So Bruce Lee basically just landed one punch in Dan Inesanto's chest, and that was that. The fight was over. As you can see here, he lands the punch, and that's that. The fight was just completely over right then and there. And like I said, in that interview, Dan Inesanto said that Bruce Lee shell-shocked him. That's his quote, shell-shocked him. And he didn't expect Bruce Lee's punch to be that strong. It's like I said, it's always the same story. No one expects Bruce Lee's punches to be that strong because Bruce Lee is not a big guy. He's not a heavyweight. Like when you think of Bruce Lee, you think of his speed, right? But guys, he had some real legit punching power, okay? Like everyone that sparred with Bruce Lee, including Joe Lewis, who was a middleweight and a heavyweight, they all said that Bruce Lee punched like a heavyweight. Even Jim Kelly said that Bruce Lee punched like a heavyweight. So Bruce Lee managed to generate some insane strength from his punches for being a medium guy. He was medium sized or even lightweight if you want to say that. Uh, he generated heavyweight level power. That, so that's, I mean, that's pretty amazing. So Dan Inesanto got to feel the full force of Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee was basically saying, brother, there are levels to this stuff, okay? <laughs> There's a difference here between you and me. So you just have to respect that difference. You have to, you have to respect my power and speed. So And they, they became really good friends, the two of them. They traveled around the United States doing demonstrations. And Dan and Santo had just massive respect for Bruce Lee. They were like brothers, the two of them. They would travel all around the United States. And they would train together for, yeah, well, up until 1973. So And uh, Dan and Santo went on to carry on Jeet Kune Do, the legacy of Jeet Kune Do. Until this day, today, Dan and Santo is still alive. So he's still carrying that legacy along. So there we go, guys. 
Thank you for watching. See you guys later. Bye.